Uh, hey guys, how's it going? All right, I hope you're having a good weekend. Okay, I'm at a quiet place now. You know, I listened to this, uh, this, I mean, I titled it, uh, this audio as determined or wishy-washy. Why I titled it like that? Because they talk a lot about that at the end. Please, I really want you to listen to the story of this guy, how he expected his wedding and called the most famous people came to his wedding. Uh, oh my God, this is, this is a great audio. I really hope that you enjoy it. Take your time. And after this, I have actually written something. I want you to read it quietly and uh, check out the video. All right, enjoy and chill. Take care. Bye now. Hi, Abraham. I have a story I'd like to tell and a question I'd like to ask. Um, Kathy, a woman I just married three weeks ago, who seems to be unconsciously competent in always focusing on what she does want and not recognizing there may be obstacles. I've known her for years and she wanted to get married in a fairy tale way. And I wanted to just elope. And having the financial means, I tried to lure her to Tahiti, no. Um, Hawaii to elope, no. Uh, we'll go to, the, we'll go to uh, Paris, very romantic, no. When she was about eight years old, she'd seen that Richard Burton and um, Liz Taylor had married at the uh, California um, um, Carmel Mission <clears throat> and had one of their um, one of their receptions at Pebble Beach, and that was what she had in mind. And so I surrendered to her because I wanted it to be the greatest moment of her life. And so everything she wanted to happen seemed almost impossible because it's very hard to get married at the Carmel Mission if you're not members, and we, we're not, and she managed to get that done. Um, it's almost impossible to book uh, the, the uh, Pebble Beach Function Hall if, without three or four years in advance. She managed to find a space, somebody dropped out in six months. The last thing she wanted was, from her movie star image of what she wanted, was somebody famous there. So I had planned to have George Michael, who's a singer, be the singer and he'd be famous and that would take care of that and I could afford that and I was going to do it, but he dropped out. So her perfect marriage would be perfect except there wouldn't be someone famous there. So then uh, it happened about three weeks ago when everything was just as perfect as she wanted except no one famous would be there. At the reception, we're at the reception, and, and Phil, one of the participants, said to me, um, uh, Bob, um, um, Oprah's here to see you. <laughs> so I said, oh, get out of here, Phil. He said, no, I'm serious. Oprah's here to see you. And I said, well, no, she's not. And he said, yeah, she's here with... Um, who, who is she here with? Uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, she's here with Clint Eastwood. I mean, I'd forgotten the, I'd forgotten the... So I said, Phil, stop it. He says, no, and he grabbed me and pulled me around in the corner, and there's Oprah and Clint Eastwood. <laughs> what had happened was uh, it was John Steinbeck's 100th or 150th anniversary, and they had brought Oprah down, and Clint used to be the mayor of Carmel, Monterey area, and they had him playing golf, and they got to the 18th hole, and they wanted to come into the 19th hole, which is the function hall, which I'd rented out so you couldn't come in. And when they asked to the come in, of course, someone said, I'm sorry, there's a, a wedding, and Oprah said, oh, my God, in her open spirit, could we come in and congratulate them? <laughs> so... I share that story because I absolutely am, you know, totally um, convinced that the law of attraction does work. <laughs> so that's, that's what I wanted to share as a story. And there is more that we want to add to this because we think that it is really worth pointing out that your dear mate was able to maintain her vibration of expectancy even with someone up close to her like you saying, that is not possible, that is not possible, that is not possible. In other words, 
It really is a very powerful story that lets everyone understand that it does not matter what anybody else thinks. In other words, her creation is her creation and everybody else is just playing along with it. But you get everything that you want provided you are in alignment with it. And you've got to think about it. This one had set this into motion since she was eight years old. In other words, the universe was very willing and able to comply point by point by point to anything that any of you are wanting. And it doesn't take that many years since you are eight years old. It just takes having beat more of the drum of what you are wanting and less of the drum of your pessimism about it. In other words, when you want something, this is what determination is. This is what setting your own track is. This is what telling the universe, this is falls into the category of making a decision and then making the decision right. Because there is nothing that you cannot achieve. And the universe has for every thing that you want the universe lines up thousands of paths of least resistance in order to assist you in accommodating it in other words uh, and doesn't it make you want to add even more details that would please you to everything when you realize that the universe can do that and the universe can do this we liked your words the universe did this impossible thing the universe did this impossible thing and then the really impossible thing that really looked like it really was impossible turned out not to be impossible after all mm. because all things are possible when you are in alignment yes thank you we think it is particularly interesting that Oprah was the one that showed up <laughs> because she hears our tapes and she understands law of attraction uh, uh. Wow. Thank you for that. Then I have a question that's about today. Um, from all of my profound and deep meditation studies, learnings, travels, years and years and years, I was convinced that to blame anyone or anything, or let me put it another way. If you didn't take 100% responsibility for everything, uh, in fact, then um, you don't have faith in the law of attraction. So that's how I have it. So today I heard you share with uh, a couple of folks, or at least one folk, um, that you might not feel, and of course, if I'm in incorrect, please correct me, that you might not feel inadequate, blame a circumstance till you can feel more adequate, and then take on the responsibility so I heard you say something about blaming a circumstance. Well, here, here's, that's not exactly what we are getting at. Let us explain why we are taking the tack that we are taking. We know that when you say you want something, that it's appropriate that you want it. And we know that this universe in which you are powerfully and leading edgedly focused has the ability to yield to you anything that you want and we also know that the only thing that will ever keep you apart from something that you say you want is beating the drum or holding a thought that is vibrationally resistant to the other thought so what we are encouraging here is that you recognize that you've got some resistance by the negative emotion that you feel and then you take whatever tact it requires to talk that resistance down now we really want to insert here and you are helping us make a stronger point of it we are not encouraging you to go from depression to anger and then stay stuck in the anger what we've noticed is that so many people go from depression to anger because anger is a sort of natural self-surviving instinct that shows up in the middle of all of that but then instead of saying I have deliberately chosen this angry thought which gives them back their power and then makes it possible for them to choose a less angry thought and a less angry thought and eventually even a joyful thought if they haven't deliberately taken the power by acknowledging that they have chosen the thought then they go from depression to anger to depression to anger to depression to anger to depression and anger and long after they're gone people describe them as somebody who was always mad at somebody mm -hmm. and so we really want to make it clear that you have to know that feeling good is your goal but you have to be happy to feel as good as you can feel and not beat up on yourself for not being able to feel the best you've ever felt okay. that's really our message this constant steady deliberate conscious is the word conscious acknowledgement because when you consciously feel a little better you can do anything with that 
when you are unconsciously feeling better then then you're looking outside of yourself for all kinds of fixes that won't be consistent for you or when you unconsciously feel worse then you feel lost in all of it it isn't until you take charge of your own thoughts that you begin to be deliberate and we want you to take charge of the thoughts that you have access to but feel the empowerment of taking charge because once you have consciously taken charge then you can feel any way you want to feel you can think it any thought you choose to think you can go anywhere you want to go you can achieve anything you want to achieve thank you very much yes indeed Second row. it's it's about determination isn't it can you feel can you feel the power in the word expect I expect something can you feel how when you expect something that the two components that are necessary are in alignment when I expect something my desires in place and my beliefs in place can you feel the power in determination in other words can you feel the focusing mechanism in determination I'm determined which means I've decided and there's no leeway would you say that your fiance was determined determined in other words there was no leeway determined determined decided no no wiggle worm in the vibration determined but you can feel the difference between determined and wishing or determined and wishy-washy you can you can feel and so you're just reaching for this focusing mechanism yes